welcome to the Teacher Talks podcast. So for this week, our guest is Mr. Cooper. So uh, what class do you teach and how long have you been teaching for? Okay. Uh, I'm the high school band director, but I also teach other things in music. I teach piano class and advanced placement music theory, and I have a jazz class. I've been here for 22 years. And mm -hmm. I taught high school band in another place for five, junior high general music for five, and I taught K through eight music for four. So wow. I think that's 36, but I'm not good with math, so don't trust me. <laughs> so you've kind of stuck with music throughout yes. your career? Yes, stuck is a good word. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, no, it was music. I mean, I, I started, I started, and I was a professional trumpet player. I'm gonna say bingo right now, everybody's listening, because whenever I reference that, I reference that so much, kids pretend they're playing bingo, and anyway, who cares? So, yes, so I started going to teaching, and, and I loved it that much, and I just kept changing jobs and changing yeah. jobs. Toy landed here, and I've loved it here, and so I've been here for 22 years. Wow. Uh, what kind of clubs do you run any clubs at the school? I don't run any clubs. I got I, I, I got uh, how, how, how can I say drafted into <laughs> doing the Smash Club. Oh Be really? Because last year, last year during our hybrid COVID little yeah. band groups, I be I found out much more about Aiden Sprout and Aiden Sprout's acumen and all his great skills with esports. And so then this year, when they needed somebody to be their uh, person, I volunteered. And so I sit there and watch them. But Aiden <laughs> and uh, Jack, they run the show. Oh, wow. So do you, have you ever played Smash before? Do you know what uh, it's I about? played when I was, I mean, my sons, when they were little, they would play. And I watch them play Smash. And very, but, but like, as the controllers change and certain things happen, yeah. I'm out. And so I don't play enough to figure out, can, and so no. They do you said, enjoy watching it? I love watching it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I love watching video games. Yeah. I watched I watched two of my sons play The Witcher last night. <laughs> like, I love watching Aww. it. So, uh, how, um, so you have two sons? Four. Oh, wow. My wife and I kept wanting a girl, but the, they kept having sons. Yep. Um, how old sons. are they? My oldest son's 29. Okay. He went to Villanova University and lives down in Conshohocken. My second son, I think he's 26. He might be 27. Who's counting? And uh, he's in the Navy, in the Navy band. He lives up in Newport, Rhode Island. And then my oh, wow. next son is 24. He lives with us. He graduated from IUP, and he works in IT. And then my youngest son goes to Susquehanna University. He's 21. Oh, OK. So yeah. Did uh, Were any of them into like music as well, instruments? Only instruments? the second one. The oh, rest okay. of them, like the rest of them, I had a rule, put this way. So I had a rule, Alice, okay. my wife and I had a rule that said you have to play, you have to play at least, you have to play through your elementary, four, five, six, and you have to at least play um, three years. Okay. So my first son played trumpet, and after a second year, he says, I want to quit. And oh. I go, what? You can't quit. And so <laughs> I looked around, and I looked at him, and he was getting upset. And he wasn't the kind of person to show emotion. I go, oh, crap. Aww. All right. So I let him quit after two. So that immediately lowered the bar. <laughs> so then my next son kept going. My next son did it three. He quit. He was a drummer. Oh. I said he's too good a musician to be a drummer. Joke. And so then he, then he quit. And then my last son was a terrible trombone player. <laughs> and he used to practice laying on the couch like this and he did it and he was two years and out so one for four uh, do you have any pets <laughs> nice segue <Yeah>, so. <laughs> <laughs> my son's good. just kidding we have four cats at any one given time we have various and sundry cats so we just adopted a stray and so we have that stray and we think she's pregnant which could add a whole new dynamic to the house that could be a lot of cat. A it lot of could kittens. be. No, we're 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 a plan. We're get, we're we're definitely gonna give some away. Yeah. There's no way because four cats is a lot. Maybe to your sons. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Well, when my third son moves out, he said he's moving out in five months. We'll see. But when he moves out, he's definitely one of the cats is more or less his. So he's definitely oh, okay. taking the one. Yeah. So we'll 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 work it out. 
Uh, what about dogs? Have you thought about getting dogs? I'd love to have dogs, but my sons never would have taken care of them. It would all fall on me. True. Yeah. It would all fall on me. Yeah. I had enough dealing with all them. When I took this job, I had four, my wife and I had four sons, seven and under. <laughs> so we were busy enough. Yeah. If I'd had a dog, I would have been taking the dog out. I would have been the one doing all that. I yeah. said, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's we, like another child. It's like another child. Yeah. I would love dogs, though. We yeah. would love dogs. Oh. But I'm like, I'm not taking care of a dog. Yeah, I got I, you scallywags to take <laughs> care of. So cats are enough. Yeah. Cats are enough. <laughs> so going back to uh, what you, the classes that you teach. Yes. So what's the difference between like um, like a normal band versus jazz band? Oh, it's it, okay. It, it, that's a great question. So like when you say normal band, most schools, all schools have like a concert band. Yeah. And you yeah. play, and and there's like you know you might have. 15 flutes playing flute one, you might have 10 flutes playing flute two, you're barely doing it, whatever. Yeah. And you play you know, more almost classical kind of music. And marching band obviously is different, football games are different, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. You go do that and it's a different kind of thing. But then jazz band is much smaller and it's only one student to a part. So there's, if it's alto one, there's one alto one. So okay. that's what, and that's the only group that I do that's auditioned. Because oh, that, you okay. audition for that because it's only your part. Like if you're playing third clarinet and concert band, you have four or five other friends, acquaintances with yeah. you. But if you're in jazz band and you're playing trombone too, you're the only person playing trombone too. Oh, okay. And, so. it, and it's jazz and it, it's different. And jazz tends to be more, it, more difficult to play. The way you make the notes sound are different. The rhythms tend to be harder. Okay. It's harder music. So, um, what would your favorite like type of music be then? Well, it used to be jazz because okay. back back and I know this is a bingo thing, but back when I used to play trumpet. When I say bingo, I mean that I say, and and Vinny knows this. <laughs> I say only about ten or twelve different things in my career. I say the same things over and over <laughs> and over. Every time somebody leaves in band, yeah, or somebody leaves a class, I go, "Is it something I said? It's a dumb joke." It's an old joke. Okay. I say it all the time. So when I say these things, I imagine the kids have made a bingo card. And every time I say one of the things on the bingo card, oh, they, just they, put a, they put a spot on there. Yeah. So I talk about me playing trumpet so many times in jazz class that they are like, secretly they're putting a chip <laughs> on the, this card that says, talks about playing trumpet. Anyway, so I used to be a jazz trumpet player. And so... So, and so jazz was my favorite. But over the years, it's, it's kind of changed. And I would say now, I listen to a lot of sports radio. I love sports. Really? I love sports. So most of the time, like when I get in my car for this, I'm going to listen mm -hmm. to a sports podcast. Because that's oh, what I listen okay. So I don't listen to much music in my car anymore. But I really like kind of a mix. Like right now, my favorite kind of music, there's a musician. His name is Jacob Collier. Like I love, okay. I love him. I love Bruno Mars. I love like there's, there's, it's pretty eclectic. Yeah. Oh, so it's like a mix of everything. Yeah, now. it's really a mix. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So you talked about sports. Um, what are your, do you, do you watch like one sport or do you watch like many sports at a time? Like yeah, do you we, go through the seasons? We watch the NFL yeah. every game. <laughs> we watch the Red Zone on Sundays every game. And we're big Sixers fans in our house, so we watch pretty much every Sixers game. We're NBA. Oh, okay. We just went to, my one son and I just went to an Eagles game a couple weeks ago. Two weeks before that, we went to a Sixers game. So, oh, wow. yeah, we love the Sixers and the Eagles. And the Eagles? Yep, love them. Mm. My, my one son, though, my son that lives in Rhode Island now, he's, he was a Celtics fan for many years. So, we still talk to him. <laughs> um, do you watch any baseball? Oh, nah, I used to. I used to. I, yeah, I mean, I, I like the Phillies. So I'll watch the yeah. Phillies, but but in general, not as much. How how excited were you when um, the Eagles won the Super Bowl? Oh, it was, well, <laughs> well, first of all, I didn't even really know they won because <laughs> I had that Hail Mary there at the end, and, and the ball got knocked down, and it was confusing. Yeah, yeah, we were super excited. We were super excited. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Unfortunately... I was only with one of my sons because the other, we, we watch a lot of stuff together. My oldest son comes home a lot and we watch things together. Uh -huh. But where we were that time, three of my sons were in college. Or, yeah, who's keeping track? Anyway, doesn't matter. They weren't there. So 
so I was on the phone with them a lot. We called and we talked and yeah, because so much of sports, so much of sports is our families being together. Did you go to the parade then? We did not. You did. Mrs. It? Fredericks, however, my great friend, the choral director here, her and her husband went to the parade. Oh, they're Phillies fans. Yeah, and wow. my eldest son went to the parade. Oh, okay. So I did have some people that go to the parade. Yeah. I personally, I'm a Bills fan. Oh, but. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thanks. That was crushing. It, it really was. No, no, that's crushing. You're going to need to talk to somebody about <laughs> that. You're going to need therapy for that. I mean, that was rough. I feel bad. Our, my sister and my sister's husband, my brother-in-law, is from Buffalo. And so, oh, really? And they live in Albany, so, which is upstate New York on the other side of the state. But her... Um, Anyway, and so my nephew, my nephew, and my brother-in-law, I, 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 I haven't even reached out to him because oh. I know that I, 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 don't, I won't even know what to say. Yeah, those last few seconds, pretty hard. Thirteen seconds should yep. be enough to win the game. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sports can be hard sometimes. Yes, they so can. It's it's great, and, and and people who don't like sports don't understand it. They think it's stupid. Yeah, that's true. And I, I have conversations all the time, whether it's in piano class or jazz class or AP theory, and I start, start talking about sports, and you can see some people's eyes glaze right over. Yeah. They're like, they don't care. I said, well, that's fine. Everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's different. Some people just don't have, like, the passion and stuff yeah, to they watch don't, it. They think it's stupid. Oh, so what are we doing now? You're taking the ball and moving across the line. Or, <laughs> what are we doing now? Putting the ball in the hoop. Oh. Yeah. It's like, yeah, just relax. So going back to your um, going back to your classes. Yes. How do you choose uh, which mu music you play in class? Yeah, that's a good question. It's changed over the years. It's changed over the years, and everything's different. Like the groups. So, for example, last year there was there were no there was no um, there was no middle school ensembles. So there was no middle school band. There was no middle school oh. orchestra, no middle school chorus. And at the high school level, we didn't have real band. We had these little teeny groups of people yeah. on these hybrid schedules. Well, we had to do music for these little teeny groups, yeah. and it was super easy. <laughs> so we did super easy. There was nothing in the middle school. So now half the band has never played anything difficult at all. Oh. So this wow. year, the music, I had to choose... I had to choose music that was significantly less difficult. Okay. Because you, if you do stuff that's too hard, it just embitters people. Yeah. Because you have some people that are great, mm -hmm. and you have some people in the middle, and you have a lot of people that are there just for because their friends are there. Yeah. And so, and you have to kind of pick something that challenges the best people, but also doesn't demoralize. Yeah. The 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 ones that it's not as important to. So, so you kind of go off of difficulties? I go for that. And also, we have 25 drummers. And oh my so, gosh. well, because if you go see, if you ever would stumble into a middle school band concert or an elementary band concert, in the back row, there's a, just a whole lineup of drummers. And maybe <laughs> six or seven of them are playing snare drum. Yeah. Well, for high school music, you only want one person playing a snare drum. Okay. So you have limited parts. And so you have all these people. Yeah. And so. I try to get them involved because, or else they're just sitting there. Yeah. They're just sitting there. Yeah. So a lot of the music I pick has to have a lot of different percussion parts to keep those people engaged. Uh, so then they go to like those different uh, Yeah. So I, so I mean, those, so this year, those were my main considerations. And also students tend to really like playing slower, expressive pieces. So I always make sure we pick a couple pieces that, that, are, that display emotion. That, okay. they're, that they're emotional. Because I think, I know adolescents love, they, they do love to be emotional and, 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 make, and, and it, it really taps in. It really makes a connection. Yeah. If I were to, for the most part, most of the favorite pieces, if I were to make a list of the 10 most favorite pieces over the past 20 years, many students would pick the more emotional, slow pieces. Oh, okay. Have you ever done a, have you ever played a, a piece that someone has like asked to play? Oh. <laughs> in like yeah, ask, ask, yeah. Ask uh, <laughs> ask Jake Mazza in there. Jake Mazza used to take up there. There's a there's there's different things on the like there's awards or certain things on the uh, on the on the the whiteboard sitting in the tray in front of the whiteboard. And if you take them off, some of like Jake would write a piece underneath there, like <laughs> play this. 
I'll come in in the morning and there'll be a list. A lot of times people will be like, play this, play this. Yeah, a lot of people do make requests. And I try to accommodate, I try to accommodate them. Yeah. Yeah, we played this piece called African Dreams this past year. And like Sandy Gonzalez, two years before, had played it in junior county. She's like, Mr. Cooper, let's play African Dreams. So I bought it and we played it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So um, what was, um, what is probably the funniest story, a craziest uh, story you've told your class? You know, I, I, I told you before in like our little pre thing, it, it's, I try to be funny every day. Yeah. I try to tell a funny story every day. There, 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 and anything I try to tell now is not going to be funny. So <laughs> I don't think I, that's true. Well, no, I just, I mean, I tell, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I mean, a recent, a, a, a recent funny story that I think is funny. They're literally, I'm going to say there's hundreds of them. And yeah. people will say, Mr. Cooper, you're not that funny. So it's an over, like, I, 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 and, and a lot of them are in context. And so you'd be like, yeah, people watching and be like, that's not funny. Because they're like inside jokes. Yeah. There, there are things that are going on. You have to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you had to be there. Um, I'd say as far as something that's funny, or, I don't uh, I mean, they literally happen every week. So, so. One time last week, because I'm reti I'm retiring this year. This is this is oh you yeah, are this I'm oh. retiring. So I announced it to the students last week, oh, wow. and I talked about one of the things that I think it's important. Like I think I think I, I'm still pa I'm still retiring when I have passion for what I'm doing. I still love I love the students. I still love music to do that. Yeah. But I know that when I was younger, like in my 20s and 30s, I approached it differently, and I was like. Oh, I have this idea, and maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do this. Yeah, their possibilities are endless yeah. when you're younger. And unfortunately, sometimes when you get older, you're like, ah, eh, that's not gonna work. Yeah. Ah, eh, we've been there, done that. Ah, <laughs> eh. and so I'm kind of at that stage of my career, mm -hmm. and I expect someone younger to come in and be like, well, why couldn't we do that? Yeah. Let's try this. Who says we can't do that? Yeah. You know, and. And so I, I, I really believe that. I don't say that so people are like, oh, no, Mr. Cooper, you're old and bald and everything, but, <laughs> but you still have, you, you know, you still have, you know, look, I, I, I know what's going on. So I did say that to the kids. So I did have a student come to me, though, and, and say, well, Mr. Cooper, we're, we're, we're sad you're going. But you know what? You're right. We do need someone younger. <laughs> Oh. That's a funny story. Anyway. Oh, um, <laughs> that's like, like they weren't even joking. They were not joking. Oh, oh my God. It was sweet though. They didn't, they weren't trying to hurt my feelings. Oh, they were just like, no, they were like, they yeah. were thinking about it. They were just saying it. And I was like, wait a minute. I was just kidding, but I wasn't kidding. So, but it was, it was kind oh. of funny. No, but it was, it, but, it, but it really is true. But it was funny that they're like, yeah, Mr. Cooper, you know, you are right. You are too old. Wow. <laughs> Well, it was quite, because, like, it must have been 10, 15 years ago. There's a teacher here that's retired, and I'm not going to say her name, so I don't yeah. embarrass her. But my sons and I, my sons and I went to uh, a midnight showing of The Hobbit when that came out. Like, and so we're, that already tells you how old that was. Because we were big Lord of the Rings fans, movies, and The Hobbit, and we all, we read the books, and so we loved this. So when The Hobbit came out, yeah. we went to a midnight showing. So one of my students said was in this other teacher's class and said oh yeah you know mr cooper just went to that midnight showing and the teacher said isn't he a little old to go to midnight showings of movies <laughs> so <laughs> so i've been used to the old jokes for yeah quite, they for go quite, for the, for they quite go a for while i've been age. getting them for 10 years wow yeah so um how do you um how do you usually prepare for concerts do you, um, how do you like pick the order that you're going to do the songs in? Well, you know, that's funny you say it. I'm thinking about that right now. Really? Yeah. Do you have a concert coming up? We have a concert in a couple weeks. A, a little hint, usually the second number in the concert, in any concert, that's the one the audiences are going to like the least. Oh, why? Well, because you want to, like, you kind of have to think. Some people have said when you're picking songs for a concert, this one's for the conductor. This one's for the students. This one's for the audience. Oh. This one, and you alternate it back and forth. 
it's really hard to not go, this one's for the conductor, this one's for the conductor, this one's for the conductor, you know, so you have to yeah. them out. But you, when you want to do something that has a certain amount of education to it. Mm. And so sometimes those pieces are more complicated and the educational ones, the audience is like, oh yeah, yeah. I don't really care. You put that second. Yeah. Because you do the first piece and it's supposed to be exciting. People mm. are like, oh, that's great. Yeah. And so then the second piece are like, ah. <laughs> and then you have a piece that's usually uh, uh, has multiple movements because you it, it's it, it, multiple it's like an educational thing like first second third fourth and plus you're kind of trying to educate the audience too like don't clap between the movements but they're, they're well, always clap between the movements yeah. and then you can make a little joke about it whatever anyway <laughs> and then you want your ending piece to be something to send the audience home whistling yeah, yeah. you know but but it's it's really hard to do that because of these other parameters like i said okay for percussion things like that so this time i have so many percussionists so this time, the piece that people aren't going to like is going to be the first one. Oh. I'm, just, I'm just rolling the dice. I'm just rolling the dice. Yeah. And usually, band concerts, high school band concerts, end with a march. Okay. I don't like marches, so we hardly ever do them. Okay. But some people don't like that. Well, Mr. Cooper never does marches. Maybe it'll work better, like, building up during the concert. Some people, you like know, that's interesting. One. Some people say that, too. Yeah. There was a famous band leader that used to say that you wanted the crescendo and you build yeah. up. But it's all different. Yeah. Like it's 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 like reading a book or something or a movie. Like like you see a movie and action movies many times start with an action sequence, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, here we go. <laughs> you know. Whereas if it started with dialogue, so what are you doing today? Oh, yeah. how are you doing? People are like, I'm bored. You just Click. automatically tune so, out. Yeah. So you kind of want to engage the audience, maybe kind of educate them, so to speak. We're not here for education. We just want to see our kids. You do some of the audience. And then you have something that takes their attention. And then at the end, when people are like, because I'll be honest with you, most people, when they go to concerts, they're going because they have to go. Yeah. Like there's nobody walking down the street going, hey, I think there's a band concert tonight. I think I'm going to go. Yeah. No, they're not. They're held hostage. They're <laughs> going to see their kids. So yeah. in general, I believe most people want the concert to be as short as possible. Yeah. So they're at C5 numbers and they're checking them off in their brain. Good. <laughs> One down, four to go. Good. That's why I try to tell jokes and be funny at a concert, mm -hmm. too, because I want people to enjoy their time. I'm being somewhat uh, exaggerating, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, because people do enjoy certain things. But in general, you know what I'm saying. When people, even like this podcast, like people go on there and go, hey, he's still talking. Even you'll probably cut this out. It'll be on the editing room floor. But in general, when people go see something, they want it to be as short as possible. So yeah. I think about that too. Yeah, the attention span. Yes. Skin shorter. Um, what what was the what was your biggest like mishap or mistake <laughs> during a concert that's happened? Oh, I think the baton's flown out of my hands. That's always a great thing. <laughs> I've almost fallen over I've almost fallen off the stage. Oh I my god. I mean that would be that would not be cool in any way, shape, or form. Um I have gotten lost sometimes, not very often, but a couple times. During uh, the music. Yeah, I've gotten lost. Like, uh, well, the one thing that's 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 a drag is just like, and you guys know this when any of you're doing anything, you want to recreate the situations before you do it. Yeah. Well, we practice in the band room. The band room has a certain amount of light. The yeah. band room has a certain sound. Well. It's too hard to schedule dress rehearsals anymore because these, the auditorium and auditorium is for use for so many things. I can't really go in there and set that up. And, to, and there's so much crap on stage. Set it up and tear it down. Set it. So we've been doing concerts without dress rehearsals. So you get out there, and I'm conducting, and the lights are behind me, and I'm a sh I'm, my shadow is on the music. And oh. I can't see it. And then these students here can't hear. The, it, the sound is completely different, and the visuals are completely different. Yeah. They're sitting in the same spots. But it's different. But the environment so, is just so different. The environment's different, and 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 it's not the it's not ideal. It's not ideal. Our first oh. song's going to fall apart. I can predict it, <laughs> because we're not going to get to practice that on stage. We'll get it together. Yeah. And the most part, the audience won't really know. They might be like, "Hey, something is something going. On? What's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> so I have made I have made mistakes. I've gotten lost. Sometimes I'm like, and because sometimes people come in wrong and they do things. Yeah. Wrong, and you have to make a decision, and 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 you have to say you're gonna follow you're gonna follow me. You're not gonna follow that person that's playing at the wrong time. Yeah. And sometimes I might have made the wrong choice. I might let's say I stopped and followed them, and then it just 
Yeah. Wrecks up. <laughs> uh, so moving moving away from kind of the the classroom stuff and the music, what kind of hobbies do you have outside of school? I love to cook. Really? Yeah, I cook four times a week, five times a week. I love to cook. I love to cook different things. But I use, I follow recipes. So yeah. like I'm not, and I'll be creative within that recipe, but I'm a recipe person. I feel like, like that's the best way to cook, yeah. Well, thank you. But, but I, 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 I'm not the kind of person <laughs> that can sit there, like we used to have Iron Chef or those things, where they give you ingredients, you yeah. have to create something. That would never happen. I follow recipes. I love to cook. Um, that's my main hobby. I like to go fishing. I used to go fishing all the time, freshwater fishing, fishing all the time when I was a kid and through college. Then when I had, we had all these sons and all these things and to take them fishing, they destroyed my love of fishing because I was <sighs> just getting them unstuck off rocks or pulling their hooks out of trees and all that kind of stuff. So they didn't fish. But now that they're older, we started fishing and I like that. They know how to fish. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's much better. better. And then I love doing crossword puzzles. I, I, I love, I do, the Sunday okay. New York, I do the Sunday New York Times crossword puzzle every day. It's one of my great joys in life. That's cool. So yeah. that, and I love movies. I love movies. I love sports. We yeah. watch lots of movies and lots of TV shows. I love prestige TV, so to speak, whatever you call it. Like the whole avenue now with, with Netflix and all the streaming services. Yeah, there's like as so soon many. as I get them tonight, I'm going to watch Boba Fett. Really? Because I know it dropped this morning. People are talking, like I, that, yeah, yeah. Did you watch The Mandalorian? Too? Loved The Mandalorian. Yeah. Loved the music in it. Loved everything about it. Yeah. And I'm not really a Star Wars person. I've Over. seen them all, but I'm I'm not like I don't fall in love with Star Wars. Yeah, I love The Mandalorian. Wow. So here's kind of an interesting question: um, If you could choose one song to play every time you walked into the uh, room, you know, you I saw I think that way. <laughs> what would it be? You no, know, well, it would be something self-parodying, <laughs> uh, it, like a parody. Like you know, I always say like when a lot of times when I go in a room and people, are, I go, hey, no need to stand up, like it's a joke. Like, oh. meaning the president's come in the room, yeah. and you'd have to stand up. So it'd be something like a joke. <laughs> like, something like I was a, like some, something like, like, a, like when professional wrestlers or MMA fighters come in the ring and they're playing something. I would play something oh, where. Like a joke it, song. Yeah, it'd be a joke song. Oh, I would okay. know. We are the champions or something stupid. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'd be something dumb. So, before we wrap up, I have one final question for you. Yes. So, what would your advice be to. Uh, to students like in high school or just students in general about anything. It doesn't have to be about school. It could be about life or college or anything. But I mean, they, they get sick of hearing this. I don't say it as much as I used to. I used to say it all the time. And it's a cliche. But it really is, it really is important to embrace each of the students' years for what they are and don't look forward to the next. You can kind of give a peek. Mm -hmm. But there's things about your freshman year that are unique to your freshman year are great. And they will not happen when you're a sophomore. And there's things about your sophomore year that are unique to your sophomore year. And those things will not happen when you're a junior. Yeah. And if you're always like, ah, this year blows. I'm looking forward to next year. You're, you're missing it. You're missing it. There's a friend that you have here that might move that next year. Yeah. That you will not see. There's a teacher that you might have right now that you will not have next year. And you'll really enjoy that. Like I always tell people, life doesn't necessarily get better. It gets different. Oh, and, you, okay. and you look at those differences and those joys and highs and lows yeah. within that difference. But I can't, seniors know this. I can't stand it when seniors just are like, oh, I can hardly wait to get out of here. There'll be less drama. Are you kidding me? You, 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 <laughs> you, you, that's one of the most foolish statements ever. You carry your own weather with you. You're going to go, and if you're a dramatic person... If you're, if you're dramatic when you're 14, you're going to be dramatic when you're 24, you're going to be dramatic when you're 104. So don't think that this change of circumstances is going to make life better. I got a million of them. But anyway, those are my main ones. That's, my that's main, really good advice. That's though. my main one. Just stay, just stay rooted in the moment. Yeah. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. And um, Congratulations on your career as well. Yeah, thank at you. Wilson. Yeah, I've loved it here. It's great. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for coming and well, thank talking you for with inviting me. me.